Most people in life are looking at how do I make a life worth living or return with having. In order to do that, we of course must regard the laws of America. The people that disregard the laws of America intentionally disregard them, literally end up in jail. The craziness of the privacy of records is that most people don't understand how vulnerable American citizens are today to the foreign liaisons and illegal citizens that walk across our borders today. When I say this, Midwestern people, the people of the Midwest of America, as we're called, don't want to believe this. They've heard of identity theft, they've heard of cybercrime, they absolutely have heard of fraud because we see it all the time where some little white trash bitch has stolen someone's checkbook or some immoral professional executive white woman has taken someone's business or non-for-profit organization money and kept it for herself. But I'm not picking on whites. We have the same type of mentality across every color group, every nation, every race. There's always someone who is immoral in front of God laws on the world and illegal in front of human laws across our nation. You see, if you're a foolish person, if your parents failed their duties in raising you, meaning they let you run around crazy, they let you run around tantruming, they let you run around thinking you were the baddest black little kid in town, that's on them. But at some point about the age of 12 or 13, you start to recognize that you are fully responsible for your choices in life. Because that's about the time that juvie and juvenile detention kicks in. But most Americans like me who were raised in good households that were still a little dysfunctional, absolutely, by all the rules of Bradshaw and other people who talk on TV about their authored work, know how to pull themselves out of those abuses, psychological, emotional, physical, and whatnot, and literally regard human life around them. We decide on the live and let live principles, much like you hear in James Bond films. We recognize that human beings have the right to choose how they present themselves in the world, whether they're an old fat grandmother pushing a walker and yelling at a child saying, I don't know, why don't you ask him? Or whether you're a black mother shouting at a two-year-old child who doesn't really understand what you're asking them to do because you've been so lazy, you haven't picked up the parenting book to decide how to raise a child ethically, honestly, and morally so that they won't be an abuser of you when they're physically old enough to do it to you. Whether that be a financial abuser always scuffing and skimming off you and out of your wallets, or whether that will be a thief in the community, or whether that will be a physical assault uh, assailant because you keep smacking them without cause. Now I can talk about simple examples that I see almost every day of how people shift their behavior to interact with their own race and their own level of educational or what we call socioeconomic demographic every day. How you talk to a person of intelligence and affluence and influence is sometimes different than how you talk to someone who's undereducated, abuses the English language, doesn't use correct grammar in the conversation, and clearly doesn't care about their life based on how they dress in childish pajamas all day. You see, the people who are trying to become successful pay attention to what creates success. The people who are trying to increase their income understand that in today's world we need multiple income streams and for some men who have families or wives or whatever they've got paltry at home, they work two jobs, such as, as a fix-it shop for computers and then at a staple shop that has technology. But what I can tell you is that when an employer employs you, he has certain roles, rules, and responsibilities that he expects you to abide by. So if we're producing a productive and performing and outperforming child who understands the laws and of human nature in regarding other people's rights and the need to be somewhat 
understanding of com the competitive nature of men, which is often foolish because we all know that more things are achieved in the world by teams. You see, it's not one human being or one president that runs a manufacturing organization that develops our cars that we drive every day. It is not one bus driver that serves the entire city every day. It is not one group of female librarians that serves our entire community in the libraries regardless of what you might say to them. And it most certainly isn't a one-person security company developing their networks, their video networks, their surveillance across the community in a world of healthy competition. There's usually multiple companies that do that to protect our personal rights, our privacy of our beings, and our property under the law in the Fourth Amendment called the Bill of Rights. 